Hey everyone, this is CXED here. Today's video is going to cover some of the topics related to enchantment that I think are interesting. I find that enchanting is kind of complicated, even though it's essential to good gameplay. It's, it's complicated, and then when you look into it and learn more about it, it becomes even more complicated. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Um, let's say, for instance, um, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming you guys know that you know bookcases uh, cause enchanting tables to increase their potency. So let's say that my goal was to uh, get some kind of uh, fortune enchantment on this pick. So if I had a level 30 enchanting table, which is because I have um, nice work there, <laughs> 15 um, bookshelves, okay, I find that the enchantments available to me are unbreaking. Well, that's not that exciting. And if I had just this in my enchanting area, I may just walk away and think that's that. But if I really was keen to get a fortune pick, well, there's fortune right there. So what's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, here I have only 10 uh, bookshelves, and here I have 15. But the fact is, is that it's pretty common, I find, um, that the enchantment you want requires less uh, enchanting p table power than what you've actually installed if you've got a full 30 uh, table. Like normally the full 30 is, is correct and works great, but um, a lot of times it, it doesn't work out like that. I found this is definitely true for, for very, very valuable things like fire aspect when you're trying to you know cook animals quickly or infinity on a bow, things like that. So let's look at my solution for this. Hi guys. Um, so we come into my enchanting room and I'm gonna show you this design um, but this design is basically uh, a binary system. And if you're not familiar with how binary numbers work, it's going to be very intuitive after I show you this. But basically we have four levers on the wall and the first lever is the one, okay? The second lever is the two. The third lever is the four and the fourth lever is the eight. If we had another lever, it would be the 16, but eight is enough, right? And it turns out that we can get zero, all switches off is zero, all the way up to 15, which is eight plus four plus two plus one. So eight plus four is 12, plus two is 14, plus one is 15. So we can get zero through 15 by summing the value we want and just hitting these switches. So let's, let's take a, a closer look at how that works. So if I hit one, you can see that a table pops out. If I hit two, two tables pop out. If I hit four, four tables pop out. And if I hit eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So if I want a level 30 enchanting table, there it is right there. All switches on. If I want a level zero enchanting table, nothing. If I want something like a level 12, or let's actually say uh, level 10. Here's eight plus two, and now I can check. Oops, I, I went ahead and I went ahead and enchanted that. Um, but yeah, so there's my, there's my fortune right there, um, just like I before. So there you go, that's how that works. Um, let's take a look at what this uh, is all about. This To make this setup, you basically need um, an enchanting table, 15 bookshelves. That's pretty straightforward for enchanting purposes usually. But here's the, here's the ugly part of it. We need 57 bits of isolated redstone dust. We need 14 repeaters. We need 15 sticky pistons, one under each of the bookshelves and we need six redstone torches. So all in total, you're gonna need a couple of stacks of redstone. You're also gonna need about 80 blocks if you wanna build this floating in space, detached from anything. But usually if you just build it in a normal situation like it's built here, um, you won't have any problem with you know, random blocks, okay? It'll, it'll be pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at what this looks like from the outside. It's, it's not the prettiest or you know most compact thing ever. I mean, uh, if somebody wants to improve on it, go for it. It just solved my problem and uh, you know it, it does work. So to show you how to build this exact thing, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm not gonna show you placing block by block because it's actually kind of complicated and I will make mistakes and just be clumsy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you each track. So basically these four uh, blocks here represent each of the four switches. And so this switch is the one that represents the single piston, the single bookshelf, all right? So when I hit that switch, it pops up, it goes down, pops up, goes down. And so we can look at quickly how this circuit works. So basically at the back side, you can see over there, there's some redstone torches. 
Here is the redstone torch for the blue line, the one that does uh, one bookshelf. It goes off to the side into a repeater, which has to sit on a block next to a block, has dust on the top. Then it drops down, turns 90 degrees, and goes one, two, three, four, five. Drops down, drops down, goes over. So now we have two, and then one, two, three in between these, and then two back. You might wonder, why don't we just go straight across here? Well, we have to do things sort of like this for other reasons, and there'll be other things in the way eventually. So this is just what's worked for me. That's how it looks. I'm going to give you a quick view of all this so that you can uh, you can stop the video if you need to and see exactly what this particular uh, stream looks like. All right, now moving on to the magenta stream. This is the one that controls two bookshelves. All right, this one I think is the most complicated one. This one. Um, it was a kind of space constrained and there's some weird things going on here you think why couldn't you just do this in an easier way well it had to fit in so here's what we do first step is we have the redstone torch as usual and in the space below the redstone torch we have some redstone dust immediately below it and next to it also redstone dust both sitting on blocks then we look at it from this angle from the side here and we have the block that these two are sitting on a diagonal block and another diagonal block with a repeater in the middle there's an inverter torch on the back side of this one. This one, again, just like this torch to that redstone, this redstone torch to this redstone is, uh, it's right above it, and then it also has an inverter torch. So basically what we're doing is we're taking this signal, inverting it, and then inverting it again. And this helps us get, uh, lose some altitude here. So when the, when the circuit's off and the pistons are retract, retracted, uh, these two guys are on, this dust, spot and this torch but when it's on those guys are off and this one is on and this repeater is on so then we come down here this is on a complete uh, on the corner of this both uh, this way and this way so we have the repeater and you ask why a repeater because it will interfere with something else otherwise dust 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 so that's one two three four uh, in this line here and then we have a two by two area where we want all dust except for one repeater. The repeater could actually go here, it doesn't matter, but either way, dust and repeater need to go into two blocks here underneath these two pistons. Just to get the level right, here's your table, here's your floor, here's the level of the piston, one under the floor. The floor is also where the piston arms are, and then one under the piston is where this redstone dust is, and if you had to excavate to, or if you wanted to place these blocks directly there, one, two, three, four under the enchant table. Let's go look at the next one, which is the green line. And the green line controls these four right here. I think the green line is actually pretty straightforward. We have a, a torch. Immediately behind that torch is a repeater with some dust. Drops down, turn 90 degrees, drop down, drop down again. And then we have one, two, three, four. Turn 90 degrees. We have one, two, three, four. The second one here is a repeater. We'll see why that's necessary in a minute. Then we have one, two, three, four again, going into another set of four. So a two by four section right here that leads into the pistons. Notice how nothing really needs to happen under the pistons. You can have them just floating over air or whatever you want. Uh, it's these uh, repeaters that go into it. Uh, actually, in fact, I believe that needs to be open, but you'll see how that works in just a second. Um, so these repeaters go into these pistons, and that's it. You can't. You have to use the repeaters on all of these because otherwise this dust will leak down and tangle with the next one, which is our. Um, oh, actually no, it'll reach down and tangle with that one. The next one is, is our final one, and this is our eight. You think this would be the most complicated one, but it's actually pretty straightforward. I think. I don't think this one's complicated at all. As Everything's pretty intuitive here, I think. So we have a torch. Underneath the torch, directly under the torch, is some redstone dust, which sits on a block. Behind the block is another block with some dust on top. And in front of that is another block. So we're basically going down to this block, down again, over, and then down. So a little bit of a spiral staircase for this redstone in a way. And we have two, so one this way, one this way, one here. And then we start having a two by five. One, two, three, four, five. And over here we have a two by three little pad, okay? And again, under the pistons themselves, there's nothing. Um, we just need this 
three by two area. Now, redstone all along the back everywhere. And I'm economizing here by redstone, 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 but these need to be repeaters or it'll all blend together and the pistons won't fire. Why didn't I put a repeater here and redstone here and here? Because the redstone will get tangled with one of those other lines if you do it that way. So that's the way we've got to do it. Again, let's just look at the levels. We have the enchantment table, we have the floor, we have the piston level, and the floor for this thing is one below the piston level. And that is pretty much it for there. So finally, let's take a look and see what all of this looks like put together. I'm gonna go really slowly, not really slowly, just kind of medium slowly around so that you can get a good idea of what this looks like. Uh, you can see that it's all powered on right now. Everything will be active and lit, all the redstone lines, with one tiny exception, which is this dot and this torch. Those are the only things that are off when everything's on. And they're the only things on when everything's off. Okay, that's because it gets inverted and it gets inverted back again. But you can see that this repeater prevents tangling with this and this repeater prevents tangling with this. And you can see that going around here prevents tangling with this and so on. So yeah, this repeater prevents tangling with that one. This prevents tangling with that one. And other than that, we covered it in pretty good detail. Now I'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration of a full count. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And 15 bookcases, which would be sit on top of these sticky pistons, um, around an enchantment table in such a pattern, creates a full level 30 enchantment table. And as you can see, we've gone through every single possible level. And that is pretty much it. So. Hopefully this has been uh, sufficient to give you an idea of how to make this thing and maybe, um, you know, give you a kind of interest in doing this. And, uh, yeah, if you make any improvements, I'd love to see them. And then feel free to share them with me. So thanks for watching.